Hey, welcome to another episode of the Sales Enablement Society, where we dig into the issues regarding how do we take sales and marketing to the next level. I'm Mark Hunter, the Sales Hunter. I'm kind of co-host. The real host is Gerhard Schwantner, Selling Power. Our guest today, Laura Welch of Polycom. Laura, introduce yourself. My name is Laura Welch, and I work for Polycom. I am the Senior Director in Sales Enablement for Polycom, and um, what that means, Polycom has an inside sales force of about 600 people, including our systems engineers and channel managers and sellers, et cetera. And my responsibility is making sure they, they are enabled with the tools, the resources, and the information they need to be successful. Let, let's zoom back to Dallas uh, and give us you a, a takeaway. Uh, what was your experience like? One of the things that I think will resonate with my uh, cohorts in sales enablement around the world is sometimes in, as a sales enablement leader, you feel like you're in a little tiny lifeboat in the middle of a giant ocean, kind of trying to make it work all by yourself with one paddle. I found peers that were just as excited and just as uh, paddling alone in a rowboat as I was, which uh, was very validating. I found a ton of great ideas, suggestions, innovative thinking, uh, forward-looking, future thinking. I found I was able to contribute a lot um, and that I was doing things right. There's a lot of stuff that we're doing that's right, which was very validating also. So my overall experience um, was that it was worth every dollar and every minute that I was away from the office. And um, have, I feel like I've gained some, um, some friends out there in the sales enablement world, as well as some really great resources to be able to tap into when I'm wanting to do you know, something different and go in a different direction. How did you uh, uh, take those ideas and uh, how are you planning to implement some of it in the future at Polycom? One of the things that I was really looking for and I've been very interested in in, in furthering enablement at Polycom is metrics. So uh, a mentor once told me, if you can't measure it, it doesn't exist. I um, interviewed our two sales VPs and said, what do, you, what do you care about? What are you measuring? What's important to you as we move forward into 2018, at the time the rest of 2017 into 2018? And shockingly, a lot of what they cared about, I wasn't measuring. And a lot of what they cared about was not what I was measuring. So what I was measuring, they could have cared less about. They don't care how many downloads of our playbook that we get. It's not important to them. And I'm measuring that. So, so I was really looking forward to going to the, to the conference and finding what are other people doing around metrics? How are they measuring their success? And how are they proving their success to their board of directors, to their sales managers, to their executive staff, to the sellers themselves? How are they going and saying, what we're doing is valuable and it makes a difference. What did you find were the key metrics that people are really looking for? What I found from talking to my, um, my sellers is that having a direct correlation between pipeline and or quota attainment and whether or not they are being trained is important. So we have mandatory training they can participate in and then we have uh, that we have a ton of tools and and things they can access just in order to to beef up their knowledge in a particular area the mandatory training we track and we have been comparing it to their quota attainment my sales vps wanted that they wanted to be able to say these reps are growing their pipeline in a particular way in accordance with what we want both from a types of solutions and services so they're not all winning in one product they're winning in a variety of products and services that we offer which is what we want we want a nice distribution there and their pipeline is continually full and they're closing at the rate that they're saying that they're going to close and we use salesforce.com inside of their mm -hmm. salesforce.com mm -hmm. and training is impactful there and so that's what they are interested in in measuring you hit on something very key there, and that is the metric really has to fit the sales cycle. Yeah. And I find so many times working, working with the companies that they have a metric that really stands separate and apart from the sales cycle. And if you don't really understand that, like, you, you know, six months, six months, that's where it has to fit in. 
And so the, I think that's a key learning for anybody listening to this, anybody watching this. Metrics well, fit the sales cycle. What is more important to look at the top of the funnel or look at the velocity in the funnel or what comes out? That's a loaded question because, you know, really, if you stop and think about it, it depends upon really what is the sales cycle for the business. If I'm in a relatively short sales cycle, top of the funnel becomes very, very critical. If I'm in a long sales cycle, I work, I work with some companies that have a two-year sales cycle. And then it's really, it's, it's, it's the middle. It's the middle to the bottom part that really, really becomes most important. So again, you really have to line it up to that sales cycle. But I think overall, our objective always has to be, how do we speed the process? One of the things that I saw at the sales conference, at the sales enablement conference, is um, one of my peers has measured their new hire onboarding, and they've looked to see how fast are they getting to their uh, quota attainment compared to the new hires that didn't go through that process. And it is dramatic in her company. It was two months versus eight months. I mean, it was shockingly dramatic and they were able to measure that. They measure that and they show that internally, that means something. That means something to the people who have the budget to invest in you know, more onboarding, more resources for onboarding, speakers, um, you know, one more extra day of onboarding because they've said they needed some hands-on with something. Those people are willing to invest in that because the, to your point, uh, Mark, the dramatic difference in getting to quota faster was all they needed to see. So how difficult is it for you as salespeople to sell Polycom? When somebody calls and says, I'm interested in a video conferencing solution or an audio conferencing solution, if, I, if my salesperson just goes off and starts talking about all of our products, then I have not trained them well. Their first question should be, tell me about what had you called today? What happened? Something happened. Something happened. And so let's talk about that. Because if they're not solving that problem, then no matter what, beautiful technology gets introduced to them, um, whether or not they invest is going to be a little bit of a crapshoot. So, so let, let's look at the other side, the technology that you make available to salespeople to help them sell, sell better, like salesforce.com and, and applications. Mm -hmm. What does that look like? We have found that our salespeople are shockingly very busy and they don't love training although they want information. And if I could wave a magic wand in a perfect world, I would be able to take information from my head and then just place it in their brain. And that would be the most efficient way of getting them trained, right? Well, I can't do that. But what I can do is break up information into short two to three minute video segments. We have video technology, so we use it. Little just-in-time videos that help them what are the top three things you need to remember about this before going into account? What are the top three ways that our competitor is uh, trying to beat us? And here's what to say against that. Um, what is your number one thing you must not remember in order to close effectively? Whatever, right? These short little segments, very popular. Um, also creating our playbooks where they can be reference manuals and not something we expect them just to read front to back. So giving them information in a way that is easy for them to absorb and digest and, and use. And that's um, what I found is, has been most effective. The other thing on the whole other side of the spectrum that they like is we have designed what we call one day trainings and they're mandatory and a team. So some teams are larger than others, but let's say average 20 people will all get on a video call together and they will set aside everything else in their day and spend four hours and we bring in subject matter experts that they've requested. We say, what do you wanna hear about this quarter? What do you need to know more about? What do you need to double click into? And we will spend, we'll give them breaks obviously. We play games, we play Jeopardy and Family Feud and we have fun with them and one one we had them all make haikus because why not? It was a new product and we wanted to hear what they had to say about it. So we have fun with them. And then we also bring on, like I said, the experts in the company that can answer their questions 
and make sure they know what they need to know. And um, it feels more personal and all they have to do is once a quarter, just once a quarter and we bring everything they need to know for that quarter and then everything else is parsed out as uh, an email, a PDF, a short just-in-time video or a quiz. So they, they really like that cadence of activities. Have you ever brought customers into the training? You no, know, but that's a great, somebody just suggested that. I, um, every quarter I hold a sales enablement council and, and I bring people from all over Polycom into the council meeting and I tell them what we're up to. I propose issues and problems and ask for their feedback and their brainstorming help. And one of the things they said is, how about if we brought some customers into our new hire training or our training process in general and let them interact with the sales team? Here's what we like. Here's what we don't like. Here's what um, we would like to see more of, et cetera. Can you share a story about that, um, how Polycom has impacted a customer organization in a unique way? We have um, offshore drilling companies shockingly are a big user of video conferencing. So a couple of, of the main applications are on an offshore drilling rig, things can get very dangerous and people get hurt. And in order to get them to a hospital or to get care, sometimes it is dangerous just getting doctors onto the drilling rig or getting support personnel where they need to be. If you put a polycom solution in place, and kind of a medical medical devices, you can connect to Polycom video conferencing solutions. You can diagnose and triage without the doctor ever having ever having to be actually on the drilling rig. So, so that kind of um, first responder medical help is really uh, impactful. And then, so let's say something goes wrong and they need to go underwater to find something. Well, being able to take a camera underwater and video conference back to the experts that are not there, but are on land, and be able to quickly diagnose the problem and fix the problem is huge. So those are two of the main applications that they purchased it for and have found the most use for um, in that company. So when you think about the future of sales enablement, uh, what does the future look like? Will there be more science? Or will there more be there more art, um, the art of selling? I think it's going to be more uh, of the art of selling. Um, I think that the access to information customers have, if they want to know about a product, they don't ever have to even talk to anybody from Polycom. They can find everything they need to know, including customer references, what the analysts have to say. They don't need a salesperson for that. What the salesperson brings is um, how to listen to the customer, how to creatively problem solve with them about how their issues can get addressed only by Polycom, right? That's the perfect sales conversation is at the end of the conversation, the customer says, wow, you are the only person that has listened to me and has been effective in having me see how you and only you can solve our problems. And that's what, to, in what I heard as in the art of the sale. Um, and I think that's going to be critical. Laura, I think you're so spot on with that because we, we get hung up in the science of selling. The science, everybody says, oh, it's the science of selling. It truly is the art. And I think the more science we get, the more the art form becomes that even more important especially with what you sell, because there's so many different applications for it. I mean, you can't walk into a conference room in America today without seeing your right there in the middle, right there in the middle of every conference room, it seems like. I want to share a visual, which is that um, uh, it comes from, from Ori, where he talks about the white space. And um, I think the white space is the technology platform. And art is being built on that platform. So it's really the white space that invites the, the, the paint and the paintbrushes to engage in a dance and, and create something amazing. More and more, our salespeople are having to interact at a higher level where they're having to um, <laughs> be in that white space and not know. And that's very uncomfortable for a salesperson is to not know, to be involved in a conversation where they don't have the answer, but they're willing to get 
in the conversation. Have you ever been in a conversation with someone and all they want to do is get out of the conversation? They're just looking for a way out, like the entire time. And for a sales for a salesperson, one of the greatest skills is how do you get deeper in the conversation? How do you ask the right questions, get deeper in and deeper in instead of let's get out of this conversation so I can tell you all about my codec and my camera and my phone and my whatever. And that's what um, I think is going to make an effective salesperson. How do you get in and stay in the conversation with the customer? Uh, let's wrap it up. Uh, Mark, uh, what is our takeaway here? Well, I think there's a lot of takeaways. And I come back to this whole vitamin versus uh, aspirin. aspirin. That's a key takeaway. But there's another key takeaway, and that's the value of sales enablement society. Laura was, was talking earlier about how she reached out to some other people to get some ideas and some advice. The, it, there's another key learning, and that is, whoa, is it science or art? It's really the art. And when it comes to training, eh, salespeople love to run for the product, but the managers really want the skills. A lot of learning in today's session. This has been absolutely terrific. I mean, I, I, I've come away with a half a dozen ideas. It's been great. Thank you, Laura. Very much appreciate it. Laura, what's your takeaway? I want to hear it. My takeaway is that in this community of sales enablement, we can never share too much. We can never learn enough from each other, and we can never um, be, sit on our laurels and think we have it accomplished and we have it figured out because there's always somewhere else for us to go to have our organizations be more effective. I would second that, and I, I also agree with Mark that uh, it's a constant balance between art and science, and I think the more science comes out, the more artificial intelligence and cognitive computing and, uh, you know, new cute platforms that send out uh, quizzes like you're using, Laura, uh, the more you have, um, so the more science you have in the company, the more we need to push the art.